What's up, YouTube? You still deciding if you want to braid? Well, one of the things you need to know about braiding are recessive genetics and what the percents mean. So with recessive genetics, there's actually four different things you need to know. Three of those things are percentages, and one of those things is a word. So when it comes to braiding recessive genetics, there's three different percentages you need to know about. 100%, 66%, and 50%. There's one word that you'll see whenever you start looking into recessive genetics, and that's POS, or possible heads. So anytime I'm looking for an animal that is for my recessive gene breeding program, always look at the percentages, because those percentages can make it or break it for your breeding program. It gets a little confusing whenever you start doing research and seeing all these numbers being thrown at you and all these words. And obviously there's a lot at play whenever you're breeding recessive genetics. So let's get rolling and see what I can teach you about recessive genetics. If this is your first time watching my channel, hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell so you don't miss anything that I put out in the future. And also, if you haven't already, watch my previous videos. Thank you. So a recessive genetic from the ball python side that I actually like using is pied. So with recessive genetics, there are animals with visual recessive genetics, and then there's animals that are het for those recessive genetics. And that is what we're talking about today. Animals that are visual recessive genetics always have the actual look of that genetic versus an animal that's set for that genetic will look normal and ha and carry that gene within them. And when you breed it to another het or a visual, you get that visual genetic. So here we have an example of what I was talking about. So you have a pied to a het pied. The babies are going to come out 100% het pied or visual pied. So you're going to get about half the babies coming out visual pied and the other half of the babies coming out het pied. Now, the 66% het, the way you get those is if you breed a het to a het. So 100% het for that genetic and another one that's 100% het to that genetic. You breed them. If you know anything about Punnett squares, the way it works, you get a total of four squares out of that recessive breeding. One of those squares is going to show that all that 25% of the babies are going to come out as visual recessive. So that means if you're breeding het pied to a het pied, 25% of the babies approximately are going to come out as pied, as visual pied. And then you have three other squares left out of those four squares. Two of those squares are going to be het. So those, those two squares are going to have babies that are 100% het. So what that means is that you actually have two out of three squares, because there's already one square that we already accounted for, and that's a visual square. Two out of three squares are actually going to be het, and that's where you get to 66%. Two thirds equals 66%. Now, if you don't know what a Punnett square is, you can easily go on the morph market calculator and you can find out all of this information doing exactly what I just said. So all you have to do is go on the morph market calculator, put your 100% het recessive to your other 100% het recessive. Morph market calculator is gonna show you that 25% of the baby is gonna come out visual for that, het, for that recessive genetic. And then the other, Part of it is going to show you that 66% hets are going to come out. And because you don't know which babies are going to be actual het, you, can, you only know that at least two out of three babies are going to be het. I have a het pied here and a het pied. If I were to breed these two, so I would get about 25% pied, 75% not pied, and they're going to be whatever combinations in this pairing. So pinstripe, pastel, whatever. And then out of that 75%, Two thirds are going to be het pied, while the other third is going to be not het pied. Now, how do you get 50% het? The way you get 50% het is when you breed a het to a normal. When you breed a het to a normal, you end up with 50% het of that recessive genetic. Because if you look at a Punnett square, only half of those babies are going to carry that the, the het recessive genetic, and the other half are going to just be normals. So this girl here is in shed but she is not het pied. So out of this pairing, I have a het pied to a not het pied female. Obviously this is just an example. I'm not actually pairing these, but just to show you that what happens, when you breed these two together, 50% of the babies are actually going to be het pied and the other 50% are gonna be not het pied. Now, the last thing I talked about, that special word, pos or possible. This is when you breed an animal that is possible het for that recessive genetic. So you're breeding a 66% het or a 50% het to an animal that does not carry their genetic at all. 
all of the babies are only going to come out as possible het for that recessive genetic because you still haven't proven that het for that other animal. You haven't proven it out of the 66%. You haven't proven it out of the 50%. So you're, you don't know if that animal is het for that recessive genetic. So all you can say as a breeder is that you have a possible het for that recessive genetic. Now, the problem with possible het is since there's no guarantee, I always treat those possible hets as non-het for that recessive genetic. Most people will breed that possible het to a visual for that recessive genetic to see if it proves out. I don't waste my time because with ball pythons, you only get one chance and then you can try have to try again next year. Now, the thing about breeding recessive genetics that you really need to understand is because of the odds, you never really have a chance of hitting that recessive genetic. Yes, if you breed het pie to het pie, there is a 25% chance. But if you only get four eggs, like I mentioned, the odds could go in your favor. You could get two pies out of four eggs, or you can get zero pies out of four egg eggs. So that's just how it goes. If you made it this far into the video, I appreciate it. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you don't miss anything that I put out in the future. Peace.